What is up my ducks and drakes? Welcome to the Crotta. Like, if you've been watching me for a while, you know I rarely go lightly on things. Whether it be how much ranch I put on my chicken nuggets, don't at me. Or senior sides theories, which now that I think about it, I actually go pretty light on. I look, what I'm saying is that I look at situations from angles when it comes to this, and I reason before I share it online, because last time I didn't do that, people came at me, and I'm not making that mistake again, so hours of research is fun. With that, the question I am asking today is, how Tom is dealing with his problems a good way? He is not just talking to himself, but personalized parts of himself that he gave backstory to, he gave capabilities to, he gave weaknesses to, he gave interests, dislikes, likes, hates to. He gave him, he gave his personality a personality. Is that healthy? First of all, is talking to yourself for extended periods of time, like around 30 minutes to an hour, like the new Center Sides episodes have been, and does it get worse or better when you're talking to humanized versions of your personality? According to ScienceDaily.com, it takes less mental effort to talk to yourself in the third person than it is the first person during a stressful time. So basically, according to the article, just saying, why is Leo upset, instead of saying, why am I upset, can make him less emotionally reactive. They say that it helps people think of themselves like helping others. But the article mentions nothing about their person's speech being a, an imaginary friend of sorts. So then, I went into research about talking to imaginary parts of your own personality. But as that is very rare, I got nothing but stuff about personality disorders and children imaginary friend articles that didn't help much at first. And before I share more, I would like to look at Center Side series from how it's working for Thomas and how this whole imaginary friend thing has been working for Thomas specifically. And update, it hasn't. This series started off with discussions ranging from 5 to 15 minutes, consisting of small problems like discussing if you're just jumping to a conclusion or discussing if you're original or discussing how to solve a lack of motivation. He had a little depth to his characters also. He didn't need them to really have their own personalities. They were strictly there to help him at first with figuring out who he was. Although as time went on, it became less about him and more about the characters that he thought of. He started giving them names and places where they go after they film in his mind. And he gave them backstories and separated them from dark and light. He even added characters to better fit situations. Think of it. Remus did not exist in the series until he had problems with intrusive thoughts. He gave his negative thinking a personality. He has also been talking to his sides for way longer amounts of times, starting from 5 to 15 minute conversations, going up to around hour long debates, even imagining them while playing video games or hanging out with their friends, like we saw the end card of SVS Redux. I mean, who thinks of their imaginary friends watching them and discussing things that they discuss a couple hours before while you're happily hanging out with friends. Tom is literally the only person I've seen do that. In the wrong, long run, over the three years Thomas has been talking to his personalized versions of his personality, things mentally have only been getting worse. We can see that through the sides. Remember, the sides are Thomas, and we can see the problems Thomas is struggling through through the sides since it's connected to him. He is most likely having trouble with pride and questioning if he is loved or perceived in a certain way because it is pretty clear as day that Roman struggles with it from the end of SVS Redux. This is most likely caused by the, his debate on self-worth and how it's perceived as a good or bad person and affecting his relationships, but that is a discussion for another day. It is also obvious to see through Patton that he's struggling with questions pertaining to his morality and whether he's a good or bad person, and he has been struggling with this for a better part of a year. So as we can see from Thomas, talking to his sides are making things worse mentally for him than in the long run. 
If MatPat has taught me anything in his series is that you always need to play things frame by frame, raise the brightness, and then look in the source code to see the full picture. But if you told me anything else, it was that science always has an answer. So we will now look at what science has to say about Thomas, like we should have been doing from the get-go. But also looking at the series itself is pretty helpful. I was not able to find anything on Google that talks about talking to personified parts of yourself. But I was able to find the closest thing to compare it to imaginary friends. I found an article on chatline.com called Imaginary Friends Can Help Kids. What about adults? The article talks about a girl named Walker who struggles with type 2 bipolar disorder. She made this imaginary friend called Jensen to help keep a barrier between herself and her negative thoughts. She came up with it about five years into her downward spiral and her imaginary friend pulled her out of her dark state using tactics that a real human would, but she didn't feel comfortable talking to a real human. Once on a Reddit community, she had an idea of what Jensen could be, a tulupa. Quoting the article, Tulumpancy, the act of meditating a mental being into existence was first thought to be practiced by Tianpin monks, says Samuel Verasmus. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce last names. I'll put it right here. So, yeah. An authorology and phys physicary professor at McGrill University and one of the few academics to have studied the subject, but its transition to a modern phenomenon happened largely online. I have retrieved another definition of the word from Google. Tulipomancy is a colloquial term for the practice of creating or interacting with tulipals, suvitors, and other mental constructions as well as for acts of auto-hallucinary training. I was considering the fact that this is what Thomas says with the sides until I learned that this cannot be since usually tulipas get mad when you call them imaginary, but we could see clearly from the series that the sides are okay with the fact that they are imaginary since they bring it up quite a lot. Because of this, we cannot really compare the sides to Jensen like I was originally going to do. The next source I looked at was sbs.com and I'm gonna admit it was kind of weird. It doesn't really have any relevant information. I just thought what they said was kind of crazy. Um, it states, historically, many researchers and parents thought that imaginary companions were harmful or evil and were a sign of social deflect, demonic possession, or mental illness. For instance, at the University of Alabama's College Met and Development Kid Lab, lead psychologist Ansley Glippen recently heard a case where a parent thought her daughter might have schizophrenia. It turned out that her jaw just had an imaginary friend. But once again, there's nothing in that article. I just thought it was funny that it brought up demonic possession. Yeah, like your your child having an imaginary friend is demonic possession. Can't can confirm. Can confirm. The next source that I found was actually the most helpful out of all the ones that I found for this video. HealthHotline.com brought up that there are five purposes to having an imaginary friend. Problem solving and emotional management, exploring ideas, having a companion for fantasy play, having someone to overcome loneliness, and allowing children to explore behavioral and roles in relationships. The very first one they bring up is problem solving and emotion management, which is the main reason Thomas has come up with the sides. He originally made them to figure out who he was, and from then on they helped Thomas with small emotional fumbles to full-on emotional crises. But we already knew that. What we're trying to discover is whether or not it is good for Thomas. So, you know how earlier I was complaining that it was hard to find articles about adults and not children when it comes to imaginary friends? Well, the health line talks very briefly about adults, but says this, and I quote, with that being said, there seems to be no indication that an imaginary friend continuing into adulthood means anything different than one in childhood. That means that having an imaginary friend as an adult is basically the same as having one as a child. So we could use articles about children's imaginary friends to help us with this theory. Going off of that, I do know that the 
for the most part. Having an imaginary friend as a child is mostly healthy and sometimes encouraged. But I would like to bring something up that the health hotline come had and said. If your child's imaginary friend ever becomes scary, aggressive, or frightening to your child, an evolution with a mental health professional can give you peace of mind. You know what I think of when I read that? Virgil, Janice, and Remus. Of course Virgil grew over time, but he started off scaring Thomas and frightening him. He was also pretty aggressive. Those three things are the things that the article says isn't healthy out of the imaginary friend. Same goes for Janice, and especially Remus, for obvious reasons with the trash rat. But the article also says having an imaginary friend is a normal and healthy part of childhood play. Having one has even shown benefits in childhood development. If your child has an imaginary friend, it is totally okay. They can grow out of it in their own time as they stop needing the skills and they get real friends. With all that information we have gathered in the last couple minutes, or more so 10 minutes. How long has it been? I don't know. I haven't edited it yet. <laughs> Do we know if it is healthy for Thomas to have imaginary sides? The answer isn't so simple as a yes or no. See, it really depends. According to the researchers we have looked at, his sides are healthy for the most part, except for Remus. Him imagining Remus isn't really healthy, and he should talk to someone about Remus and him imaginary imagining Remus. And I know you're probably thinking, but VP, he has no control over Remus appearing. You can't logic your way out of intrusive thoughts. And to that I say, he's imaginary. Maybe the thoughts themselves are like that, but he is actively imagining Remus. So he classifies as a dangerous imaginary friend. Virgil was like that until he imagined him as a nice side. And I guess Janice used to be like that too, or still is, to an extent, I don't know. So in conclusion, this started off as a healthy enough and turned into something that he should probably get help with. It is one thing to have imaginary friends, but it is another to have one that makes you feel uncomfortable, scared, or frustrated in the way that Remus makes Thomas feel. But maybe I didn't look into it enough. Maybe I overlooked something big because I did most of the research at 4am. For this reason, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I really like talking about suicide theories with people. If you'd like to talk further in depth with me and with other fanders, I would encourage you to join my Discord. I do have a chat exclusively for Sanderside's talk, but we do that in any chat anyway, so mm. excluding Sanderside's, I think it is just cool and fun place to be and hang out with cool people in my Discord. Link to that and all my other socials will be in the description below. Speaking of which, all the resources I've used in today's episodes, so like all the websites and stuff, will be in the description below. Tune in on Wednesday to get the exciting conclusion to The Golden Rule, the book I was, is, reading for my Wattpad Read Aloud series. Hope you enjoyed today's episode, and like always, do your best. Her daughter might have schizophrenia- dang it, I got it wrong again. Her daughter might have schizophrenia- frick daughter might have schizophrenia no that sounded wrong her daughter might have schizophrenia that sound like i said it right this time that sounded